Hi, this is Paul. Now I'd like to introduce you to DNA Metro. I showed in my last video that the dodecahedron is made up of five cubes and these five cubes are arranged so as to act like a processor for giving us 20 vectors and these vectors are the pathways for DNA itself. I found by animating the sequence of the cubes I was getting wonderful results with the 369 arrangement. I realized that in nature we do not have the 3D software to accomplish this. The physicists show that the atoms and the molecules etc they all spin around in spherical order. So I decided in order to figure out how this processor works in nature I think this is the way to go. Okay we'll go to the front view and we'll draw a yellow circle around the center point. The diameter will be 519.615. This is root 3 of 300 of a cube I'm just putting in. The four vertices of the cube should all line up as shown with the circle and each of the readings in the Z should be zero. Okay, now we make a three point circle around the top three vertices of the cube. I call this the Yucatan circle in my last videos. Okay, we'll rotate the cube around half a turn and we'll remove the front half. We use the Yucatan ring as an axis. So we bring it back to zero and now the edges of the cube will give us a nice rectangle. So look at this, we can morph the four edges of that rectangle to fit perfectly to the outer circle. Okay, now I'll bring in the full cube and get rid of that back piece. And now I'm going to rotate a copy of that rectangle 120 degrees twice and now with the Yucatan ring in another axis I make another two copies. We need a third Yucatan to do the last copy so we'll do this one. So look what happens when we swerify the three sections together. I think it's amazing that just out of six rings we have six metro lines meeting together on each of the eight vertices. Okay, so now we've got a yellow cube with all the morphing circles with it. So we can rotate a copy 75.4 and we can change the colors to red on this one. Now we'll hide the red and use a new yellow and purple vector to rotate 44.6, a purple cube copy. So now we'll hide the yellow cube and we'll bring in a purple and green vector and use this axis to rotate a green copy 44.6 degrees. So now we'll hide the purple cube and we'll bring in a green and cyan vector. So we'll use this axis to rotate a cyan copy 44.6. Okay, so the cyan is our last cube. So let's check it out with the dodecahedron. It looks good. So let's spherify it. And look, she spherifies beautiful. So now we'll check out the purple cube. And that seems to check out good also. And now for the third one, and that's going to be the green. And that checks out perfect also. So now we check out the red, and that will be number four. And that one's looking very good. So now for the yellow one. And that will be the fifth and last cube. And as you can see, that one is looking good also. Okay, we'll get rid of everything and just bring all the outlines in together. So when we spherify, we have a mass of circles, but we'll give it an internal sphere and we'll give it the 20 dodeca vertices in two color. I'm also going to give you a spherical dodecahedron. Okay, we'll give it a slow spin and start checking it out. I would say that we are looking at a piece of architecture with some wonderful congruence. You are looking at the five color circular metro system of DNA. There are 12 lines altogether meeting at every vertex. Now they belong to two cubes and one cube is exactly golden ratio to the other. To explain this basically, it's probably exactly the same as the flower of life.
and I think in the future this is going to be extremely useful. So you're looking at the very beginning. Now we'll start with the 369 Metro and we'll give it a red and yellow vector as the first center. And we'll start running the Metro from 1 to 9. And after the 9, we're going to finish up with a new green and cyan center. I give it a little bit of special effects because we are working in 3D reality. Now take a look at the shape of the metro track that runs through all the 9 vectors and back to a start again. This special shape can rotate around the center point at 120 degrees and give you exactly the same. Well, the shape stays exactly the same but the colors of the tracks will change to the same as the metro tracks. Okay, I'll give it another 120 degrees turn and that'll take us to 240 degree. So okay, let the train go and we'll give it another 369 profile. Now we'll take it back to 360 again. So we've showed it going through the three phases, just like I showed in my earlier videos. This is a very important feature not only for DNA but for electricity as well. So I've showed you that the profile for 369 never changes. So she starts with the zero center, then goes one to nine bends, and then she comes back to a new zero center. Okay, so now I've put a video together and we'll start with the zero vector and work our way through. We do the 369 cycle and we end up with the cyan and green vector. So now we're on the second cycle around the green and cyan vector. And this is going to give us the purple and red for our third cycle. So we keep doing this until we get through the 10 cycles. So I'm showing each of these cycles as a separate cycle. But actually, one cycle is joined to the second cycle, to the third cycle, because it leaves and starts off all the time on a new cycle. So around each vector there are two strings because you've got positive and negative, one opposite each other. And I guess the two colored balls that goes to each vector, they can be just like light bulbs because there's always two cables going to them. I'm not exactly one of them atomic physicists. I only know that things can go out with one big bang. Notice that the metro colors always keep changing. That's because I've matched the colors with the metro lines on every cycle and you're probably wondering how I got all the cycles to the right sequence I'll show you this later okay well now we're on number nine cycle which is the red and cyan and we've only got one vector color left which is the yellow and purple vector so I'm giving the 369 around this number 10 vector which is the last vector of that sphere now I found that you have to make a copy running along the cyan and green vector axis. So now we'll bring the second sphere with the green and cyan vector down into the center. So we'll do an animation of the 369 sequence around this vector. So that brings us from 100 to 110. Okay, now I've discovered another sequence. Let's call it the tripenta sequence. And look, if we start in the center with the red and yellow at 1, we can now go to 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, then 7, then 8, then 9, then 10. As you see, we can't go anymore. The green and cyan is already taken. There's something else amazing about this shape also. Now look at this, we can rotate the sequence around 120 degrees, the same as the 369. So we are all set for three phase electricity. We're looking at the top view now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you the front view and I'm showing the top and the bottom also. So now you can see that the top and the bottom strings work perfectly together. So we'll get two strings, positive or negative. So we can say that the tripenta does six strings. 
if you multiply by the three phases. Now I've put a little animation together and you can see the little icons of the 369. So we'll start with the red and yellow center and that will give us a 0 to 9 sequence. So the next one is going to give us 10 to 19, then 20 to 29, 30 to 39, then 40 to 49, then 50 to 59, then we got 60 to 69, then 70 to 79, then 80 to 89, and finally we get 90 to 99, which is our 10 vectors. And I'd like to thank Baragazi on Script Spot for his help with Wrap to Object modifier. Okay, now I've put an animation together so that you can see the sequence going from each center. Sequence centers will be for 10 spheres. On the left, you can see that I put all the colors together of all the vectors 1 to 10. M1 is the sequence for the vector colors of the animation that we have shown. And it seems that it's using the same sequence to go to the second and the third sphere. Don't expect me to give you all the answers because this is almost as new to me as it is to you. Because I discovered that it does a 100 sequence and is still looking to do more, I'm interested to see where this is going to lead us. I think anybody that studies this will agree that there is a endless possibilities that this will do. This system will probably take many years of study and I don't think nobody's going to ever get around to understand the full system. You can have feedback also on this. There's so many possibilities. It seems the big professors have ignored my work up until now, but I don't think they should close their eyes or ignore this discovery. Okay, now we're on M10, and that is our last sphere. Okay, what I've done now is I've put together an animation of the 10 spheres following the M110 vector sequence arrangement. And what's amazing about this is that each sphere, when it's given the correct vector color, it creates a position in space of perfect order. The perfect spherical arrangement produced looks to me like one half of a sine wave. But what's amazing about this is that it's completely different to the tripenta, which give us the M1 sequence. I wonder how many scholars will ignore this fantastic mathematical concept, because all the la -di da is on chaos. Tesla did say about a hundred years ago, if only people knew the importance of 369. Okay, now you can see that the red and yellow vector runs between the center of sphere 1 and right through the center of sphere 10. Isn't that something? Okay, so now we've made another animation and we will see the 10 spheres positioning themselves to the vectors of the M2 sequence. Now look at this. It's making another sine wave and is following a helical path. But this sine wave is using the cyan and green vector as a center axis. Isn't that something? I would love to take this thing further and further, but these animations take a lot of time. I'm going to try and simplify things to go a little bit further in my next video. Okay, now you can see the red and yellow vector that is centered to the first 10 spheres. And you can see that yellow and red is the first vector of M1 sequence. Now look at the long cyan and green vector. This is vector 1 of the M2 sequence. Okay, now I'm showing 1 and 10 for each of them two vectors. And now I'm changing the opacity of the spheres for you to take a better look at them. I had to keep them transparent so that you could see the vectors. So I'm sorry we're going to have to leave this. I just don't have the time to fit everything in. There's a ton of stuff altogether. But before I end this video, 
I'm taking you back to the DNA Metro again. In my previous videos, I show two icosas in the dodeca being part of the DNA geometry. But this pair of icosas is only for one vector only. So what you see in front is that I'm showing the outside vertices of the icosas on the 10 vectors. What's amazing is that the ladder for each of these vertices they run through the crossroads of the DNA metro. Now notice I've changed the colors of each of these vertices to match the crossroad lines of the, of the DNA metro. If you notice, I don't show the dodeca vertices. There's 20 of them also. But there are still other crossroads that are not being shown. And what I found, the further in you go, the geometry comes up on them as also but this thing is going to take a long time to figure everything out but i believe from the results that have been given that this is a very essential part of dna but high qualifications have decided this part of dna is 98 percent junk tradesmen don't expect to be paid for doing things wrong so I think this comes to the end of this video. So this is Paul saying thank you very much for watching my video.